Hi, I'm Lennart. I create all the materials for ccgeotextures.com and today I want to show you how you can get more out of these materials by using SPSIR files or for short substance files. Now in case you're unaware, many of the materials on the site, including this material, Bricks 39, were actually not created using photos but rather completely in the computer. So here's what that looks like. It's a software called Substance Designer. Um, and you start out with a very basic pattern like these, these bricks and these bricks get piped through a number of filters in these individual nodes until eventually you have a material like this which has all the details and everything. And this material would normally get exported as just a bitmap, a JPEG file or a PNG image and that would be imported into any other software like Unity, like Blender, like Cinema 4D, whatever. But there's also another option. I can also take this entire graph and compile it into a file. This does not include the, the result itself, just the description of how to create this texture for the computer. And the cool thing with that is that you can take this description and tweak it for your own needs and that's what these substance files actually allow you to do. So if you find a compatible material you will see that it has this button created using and that will send you to the actual SPSIR archive. In this case this is Bricks Substance 002. You can see it has this substance logo on it that's what I use to indicate that this is a substance file. If you just download it like this you'll get just one very small file and if you've never used Substance or uh, the Substance ecosystem in any way you'll probably not be able to open it. You'll need special software for that. Now there are two options, or sort of two ways that you can take. The first are plugins. There is a number of software out there that already has integrations for these Substance archives or in general for the Substance ecosystem. So for example, if you're using Unity, if you're using the Unreal Engine or any of the other big game engines, if you're using any of the big commercial modeling tools, then you will al already have a way to open these files. I cannot go over all these integrations in detail. If you are interested in those, then I would encourage you to just go to the Substance website where you can find all the um, plugin files and everything that you'll need. It's usually not very hard to set up, it's very easy actually. But we don't have the time to go over all of them. Um, so instead I'm going to show you a second way which is the, sub the Substance player. And you might actually need that because you may have noticed Blender, the very popular 3D modeling suite is no, notably not on this list. So if you are a Blender user you'll definitely need the Substance Player and that's what this video is actually about. So let's go over there. Um, it's also on the Substance website, it's just substance3d.com slash substance player and it's, it's a one button download there's no sign up, you don't need to um, give, give them your credentials. It also doesn't cost any money, it's just a small software and once you've downloaded and installed it you can go back to CC0 textures and you can actually take this file. Here it is and if you just click on it it will open in the substance player so we're no longer in the designer we're now in the player phase basically um, and in here you'll have all these different settings. I've sort of grouped them when exporting the material and you can adjust them using these sliders. So we, we, before we start, just a quick overview over the software. Um, here is the 3D preview, that's probably the most important part of the software. It gives you a sort of visual indication of what the material is going to look like. You can change the preview quality up here. I'm just going to set that to 2048 pixels so that we have a bit more detail. Up here you can also switch to the 2D view which shows you the individual maps of the material. So you can see right now it's basically unchanged. There's 
not a lot happening. I mean, there is a lot happening, but it's uh, it looks exactly like the material from the website. And up here, we also have the option to later export the bitmaps. We'll get to that. So for now, let's just start playing around with these sliders. That's actually what I would recommend to you in general, if you're using this software. This preview is very responsive, so you can just take a slider and move it over and it will adjust accordingly. Um, and we can't go over all these settings individually. There are quite a lot of them. So again, just take the software um, and play around with it until you have something that you think looks cool or that fits your project. For example, you can um, change the color as I'm doing right now. I'll leave it like this. Um, you can create all sorts of the uh, degradation effects, you know, like moss growing uh, on the soft, um, on the wall. You can maybe add some cracks to it um, or make the cracks stronger than they are. And you can change all kinds of settings. Again, just just play around with the sliders until you find something that that you think looks good. And once you have that, change the resolution to the output resolution that you actually want. In my case, because we're recording, I'm just going to set it to 4096. And then click on export as bitmaps. This will open up a new window and it will ask you to specify a folder. I've already prepared one. And it will also ask you to choose a file format. For this, I'm just going to use PNG. Now you can also choose to not export certain maps. For example, if you don't want the ambient occlusion, you can just untick that. But for this tutorial, I'm going to leave them all enabled. And then you can click export, which will take a minute or two. And now we have, oh, let me move it over. Now we have the final material with its new color scheme and its new like effect on it that we can apply into any other software that we like. I hope this was a, a helpful sort of introduction to the Substance ecosystem. Again, if you are using another software which has a native integration, go look up a tutorial for that native integration. There are so many of them that I can't possibly cover them all. Um, but if you're using Blender, then this is a way that you can get your texture maps um, that you can then import like any other texture. Okay, so just three more points before we are done here. Firstly, if you are on ccctextures.com, you can change the asset type to just show SPSIR files. This is very useful if you are only interested in those. Secondly, if you want to use these textures in Blender, you can go to help.cczotextures.com, which contains an article with a number of different screenshots that explain how to use the, the textures in Blender. And lastly, if you find any of this interesting or helpful, then you can support cczotextures on Patreon, which allows me to create new textures and invest in better equipment. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.